Hello, Haunted Family. Welcome back. Story 1 Holly Hill I live in a big two-story house on top of Holly Hill with my family. My mom grew up in this house, spent her whole life here. But the house was around long before my family became as caretakers. From the age of one to about four, I had a ghost friend. I wasn't afraid of him. He was a young, indigenous child. But one day I couldn't find him. And after that, he never came back. Not long after that, my dad found a cannonball. Well, ran over it, actually, with the lawnmower. He brought it inside, and it's been in the house ever since. We suspect that a battle must have been fought on our ground at some point. When I was four, my grandmother died, leaving me with only one grandparent, my grandmother from my father's side. When I was about eight, I got a drum set for Christmas. A couple months later, I was reading a book. I put it down to take a sip of my drink. I was sitting on the sofa, which is right next to the room with my drums. I saw a very distinct looking figure of a man wearing jeans and a tie-dye t-shirt with really long braids. He was sitting in the chair at my drums. I got up and ran away. Not gonna lie, it freaked me out. Sometime later, I was walking past our staircase and I just got spooked. I don't know why. Last year, one of my dogs passed away. And some nights, I still hear that dog's collar. You know, the distinct sound of his tags jingling around like the dog is up walking. It scared me at first, but now I just fall back asleep when I hear it. One night recently, I woke up choking. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk, I couldn't cough. And then my other dog ran into the room. And instantly I stopped choking. I'm not sure that the choking was paranormal. But I'm going to have that dog sleep in my room from here on out. Story 2. The Lake Cottage. My family had this cottage in a clearing by a lake. Our cottage was almost completely surrounded by forest. There was a dirt path that cut through the trees. And it eventually became our driveway. Being eight and curious, my parents would allow me to roam the woods around the cottage as long as I took our German Shepherd with us. And she was an old dog who always stayed right by my side, especially during these excursions. One morning I decided to take a stroll through one of my many beaten paths to pick some wild strawberries. As I bent down to forge, I hear my dog growl. I thought nothing of it. She was so protective of me. The slightest noise would set her off. A few moments later, I noticed that she was no longer by my side. I began to call her name, but to no avail. I decided to start back to our cottage. Thinking that she must have got tired of waiting for me and made her way back. As I walked down the path, I heard a loud crash, like a tree falling, and turned in the direction of the sound. I gazed upon a rocky hill covered in moss and fallen debris. The sun was shining bright through the canopy, and I had to squint. Something very large was quickly climbing the small hill, with its back towards me. I froze thinking it was a bear, until I realized that it was white and seemed to have a shawl or wide belt tied around its waist. It had to have been seven feet tall and every bit as broad as a grizzly bear. Moments later, my dog came running from out of nowhere. 
My dog began to bark and bare her teeth. The thing turned towards us, and I was unable to make out its features. Immediately, it vanished at the hill. I ran home, screaming. My parents quickly ran to meet me as I came crashing out of the brush with my dog in tow. I started rambling on, unable to make sense of anything I was saying. My parents just tried to console me and brushed off the experience as being my overactive imagination. For the next few nights, if I heard rustling noises, I got scared. Sometimes I even thought I heard a low growling hum just outside my window. I kept my shades down. I didn't sleep a wink, and my dog just sat at the foot of my bed, growling softly towards the window. I was reluctant to tell my parents for fear that they wouldn't believe me. But it soon became clear to them by the bags under my eyes that something was wrong. I finally broke down and told them the story. My father immediately said it was probably the neighbor boys just trying to scare me. We found out later that the neighbors were away for the whole month visiting relatives in another country. The next closest neighbors were a good three miles away. The only way to access the front of our cottage, short of tramping through the dense brush, was to come up the dirt path. If this was the case, I would have heard footsteps. As the approaching person came up the gravel entrance to our lot, I think maybe, just maybe, I experienced a Bigfoot. Story 3 Something in Kentucky I was about 10 or 12 years old. My sister and I were sleeping in the same bed. We were awoken by the sound of a horse whining in our bedroom. We scooted, terrified, back against the wall and listened for several minutes to the sound of the horse breathing and snorting and whining. The property our house was on was a brickyard in the late 1800s, so I imagine there was plenty of work for horses around the place. And I guess that may explain our experience. However, my mother has several stories to tell and I can personally vouch for her honesty. In the 1950s, my parents were young, married, with their first child. They lived in East Central Kentucky, in a rented house. The lady that they rented from once asked my mother if she experienced any trouble in the house. Well, my mother and father did have trouble. In the morning, after my father would go to work, my mother would go back to bed. This was an old house. It was a dry house with no running water inside. Just a well outside in an outhouse. While in bed, my mother would hear the kitchen door, which was always locked, open, and then heavy footsteps proceed to the water bucket. The sound of the dipper touching the sides of the bucket. Water splashing. And then footsteps retreat from whence they came, and the door shut. My mother never got up to investigate these sounds. Though she heard them many, many times, she was too scared. Another time, while she was outside, she heard what sounded like a shower of rocks hitting the opposite side of the tobacco barn. She went and investigated, and found nothing unusual. My father's mother and little brothers came to visit one day, not knowing that my parents were not at home, and they saw a little blonde-haired girl standing by the house. She ran to the other side of the house, and my uncle jumped out of the car, running after her. 
thinking that she must be my mother's little sister, Ellie. He yelled after her, and she never answered, and he never found her. Needless to say, it was not Ellie. I've saved the strangest story for last. Once, while my parents were in bed, they saw what my mother describes as a green and orange ball, very large, float through the living room, into the bedroom, and hover over my brother's crib. It hovered there for several seconds, and then faded out. Another time, my parents had just settled down for the night, and a sound like a vacuum cleaner, very loud, moved through the living room and into the bedroom and hovered over my parents' bed. They described being paralyzed by this. My mother said it felt like cold steel bands were on her ankles. They then passed out, and they don't recall anything else until the next morning when they woke up. My father's teenage sister was staying with them that night, sleeping on the couch. In the morning, my mother asked her if she had heard anything the night before. She had experienced the exact same thing my parents had. The noise, the paralysis, the blacking out. Very strange. Very strange.